So it's a weekend, it's Saturday, and I decided to bake. Plus also one of my um, subscribers, okay, before I go any further, guys, thank you so much for subscribing. I think now we are closer to 500 subscribers. I'm sure by the time I post this, maybe so Mrs. Figured on 500. But thank you so much for your support. I mean, this thing happened so quickly because I was not consistent on YouTube before. And I would post and then post again like after three months or after months or whatever. So this time I just told myself it's okay now I'm going to try to be consistent and try to post as much as I can so thank you so much for your support and I've seen with this consistency where I'm posting like quality videos for you guys I've seen so much code and I'm definitely sure before the end of the year or even maybe around June or July I would hit like a thousand subscribers but um, for now, I'm really glad, I'm really um, grateful for your support. And now we're just gonna be posting as much as I can. So usually I, I was gonna post once a week, but it becomes too much. I'm not gonna lie to you because I have a nine to five. I have other stuff that I need to do on the side. So I was like, okay, I think once every two weeks that will do for me. And actually it works because um, I did post the other week, so I didn't post yesterday, which was Friday, and I'll post again next week Friday. So at least these two weeks in between gives me enough time to have like more footage and also to edit. Let me just close this door. It's like it's about to rain, but I doubt the weather is offish. But anyway, as I was saying that um, I think these two weeks helps a lot because now I have time to actually get more footage and be able to edit um, like just to work my schedule in between because each and every week was becoming too much right so this method works for me right now so um thank you thank you so much and i'm sure by the end of the year so Mr. Chile about more than a thousand subscribers and yeah the only way is up there's no way <laughs> so yeah today i will be baking and also one of my subscribers suggested that um they need more baking videos and i'll try for always to do that like most of the time but i don't know we'll see but thank you for your suggestion so today we'll be making a banana bread right um the reason also why i'm doing that is because i have so many bananas here I don't know why I was not eating them during the week. So as you can see, um, they're starting to change color. And if I dig them in, um, any further, then I'll turn a sour baller and that means I have to throw them away. And that's waste. And I hate waste. So we'll be doing it. And also, these are the best um, bananas that you need to be using whenever you're making a banana bread. Nice and ripe because um, yeah, I'll explain to you all those things um, during the video. But here's the trick now um, of making this. I have no measurements, right? I have the ingredients. Um, I understand um, what's the ingredient and in, in, what does it do in the form in the in, so it's formulation and the recipe. That's very important for you to understand that. So I have understanding of all that and I'll use my knowledge to get through all this thing, right? So I have my flour, I have my um, plain yogurt, baking powder, vanilla essence, eggs, oil, and I also add sugar here. Um, so I believe, okay, I'll also add other things as, as it goes because it's very, very important for me or anyone to understand the recipe before you, you do anything, right? So yes, I've done it by an bread before, but that was like a long time ago. I think it's been over a year right now. And I do have it in my recipe book, but I'm not gonna look at that. <laughs> I'm just gonna use my, my knowledge, my ingredient knowledge, right? Whenever I'm doing this, I'll have my measuring cups and all that. And everything that I'll do will be out of my head, like right now. Yep, I hope it doesn't flop because then I'm going waste it and I ingredients. I hope so. So, without wasting any time, let's let's start. So I've already lined my my pen. It's a silicone pen. Um, 
with the baking sheets so as you can see i have this um, overlaps here so that's so my easier to put it out once it's done so i've done that done and now i start weighing my ingredients um and mixing everything while i do that i'll also explain um what's the purpose of each ingredient what does it do in the recipe and all that kind of stuff then it will make it easier for you even when you get that recipe online because some other recipes right they will say maybe you need let's say uh buttermilk right and you don't have buttermilk in your house you can still use yogurt or you can make your own buttermilk with milk um, and vinegar or any other acid so want to understand the purpose of each um, ingredient because you find that maybe you don't need buttermilk you just need milk as it is or you have yogurt you can use yogurt or if you have anything that in your fridge you think that might work you can substitute with that right so we're gonna start right now and i explain everything as we go so firstly i'll switch on my oven um to warm it up so most of the recipe, um, recipes out there, they usually um, say between 180 and 220, I believe, for your oven. So I'll set mine to 180 and we're going to use that for now. Okay. So now it's at 180, it's warming up. Meanwhile, I start with the ingredients. Okay, so I'll be using my scale, right? So we'll start with dry ingredients. So usually one cup of flour is about 120 grams, right? I prefer to use grams instead of cups, right? Because at least with grams, it's accurate, firstly, and um it's also easier to work with than cups because you find that a cup is not the same as the cup that your friend or whoever or myself have right so i prefer just to use grams and we all know that one cup of flour is about 120 grams so for this recipe i'll start with two cups which is um 240 grams right I'll start with that and then maybe I might have to add more later on I don't know but for now we'll start with 240 grams so I'll be sifting my flour like my dry ingredients the reason why I'm sifting is to incorporate more air into my product so that I'll get that nice fluffy bread you know all that nice stuff at the end so we'll start with our dry ingredients so it's 240 i'm going to add my baking powder so i'm going to add one one teaspoon of baking powder which is about 3 grams and also just to add a little bit of um, lift onto my bake I think I will also add a quarter teaspoon of baking soda also acts as a leavening agent and salt 3 grams of salt so salt is it's a flavor enhancer right you might ask yourself oh we're making a cake won't it uh, mess up your taste or whatever it's only a little bits of amount and it's a flavor enhancer so everything that you add in here will actually be elevated by your salt we're done with our dry ingredients so 
I was gonna add sugar here. Ne? Actually, let me add it. But you can also add sugar as your wet ingredient. So sugar, what it does, it adds more. Okay, it adds sweetness, as we all know, into our um, baked goods, and also adds um, moisture, right, and also structure. So you'll find that if you don't have enough sugar in your product, then you might get your product might not be soft or you know fluffy as you want it to be because you don't have enough moisture that's coming out from the sugar. Yes, you can get moisture from other ingredients and all that. But for now, for this um, instance, you need sugar for that. So you can add it as a dry ingredient, but you can also add it with your wet ingredients. But sugar actually dissolves in um, in water or whatever liquid that you put in. So I'm gonna add it with the dry ingredients for now. So I'm using brown sugar. You can use white sugar if you have. But the reason I'm using brown sugar is because um, it has a more like caramelly taste and yeah, just adds those nice things into your product. So I'm gonna add 200 grams of sugar, brown sugar. Guys, to be honest, I hope this comes out well. I definitely hope so. Okay, so I have 200 grams of brown sugar in here. Mix everything, put it on the side. And now we're gonna move to our wet ingredients. So for our wet ingredients, I'll start with two eggs. So I'm using large eggs here. Two large eggs. And one tablespoon of vanilla essence. One teaspoon, sorry, of vanilla essence. Our sunflower oil so the reason why we're adding sunflower oil also contributes to your moisture in your product but also it makes your bit goods last longer right so I'm gonna put this like in the fridge um, I'm gonna maybe finish it maybe by end of the week or something it will still be fresh so vegetable oil um, keeps your products longer um, keeps them fresher for longer so you'll we'll see it mostly on your um, like chocolate cakes, vanilla cakes, and other baked goods. So that's what it does. So here I have a quarter cup, right, of vegetable oil. And I'm also going to add one cup of plain yogurt. So plain yogurt also adds to moisture in your product in your end product but also it will react with your leveling agents right and then will create that nice fluffy end product at the end so here i'm gonna add one cup which is actually one cup it's a lot i'm gonna add about 100 grams I'm gonna add 100 grams of chili yogurt. I'm not sure how much is that in a cup, just because this one is like one cup. And then lastly, we're going to add our ripe bananas. So I will use the scale to measure how much I've used, because as I've said before, the size might not be the same. So you might get the big ones, and I only have these ones. So if I'm weighing them in a scale, you'll find out maybe if you have the big ones, you'll only use two. But with these small ones, maybe you might use four or five, right? So I'm just going to mesh this up. And also, now my banana will be the, like a huge contributor to, obviously, because it's called banana bread. 
but also nazo they they do add moisture onto your end products So now let's see how much do we have. Okay. So currently we have about 280 grams of mesh bananas and I'm just gonna add one more because I think this won't be enough. I'm not sure if I did speak about a flour. So flour adds structure into your baked products. Yeah, adds structure, adds your gluten, and yeah, just makes your products stand well so that they don't like flop and you know. So definitely flour adds structure onto your end products. Okay, so now I have 360. Okay. I'm gonna mix everything together. Then I will add in my dry ingredients. And then I'll just fold in everything. I believe this might be the current consistency, but I also forgot, forgot to add the most important ingredient on this cinnamon ground. Actually, I was supposed to add it with the dry ingredients, but it's fine. I'll just sprinkle it here. Okay, so I believe this is fine. And I'll take my silicone pen here. It's not gonna overflow. I hope so. Okay. It should be fine. And now to make it look nicer, I've seen it. The, I've seen this design on online a couple of times I'm gonna try to slice my banana in this manner okay lovely so the oven's been on and now I'm just gonna check it in for at least 45 minutes. I'll check after 30 minutes and see and then if I need to bake it um, longer then I'll increase the time. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes right now. So I'm just gonna check we'll see. I'm definitely sure I need to leave it a bit longer. Oof. 
gosh it's bad oh, look at this okay it's actually not that bad i need to leave it longer okay so i'm just gonna increase the time again by 25 minutes yeah this should be fine okay so it's been over 50 to an hour right now and the bread is done and to be honest guys i'm happy i'm happy with the results look at this look at this i know it you know I'm happy with this so right now I'm just gonna let it cool for at least 10 to 15 minutes and I'll take it out from this thing you know I think I'm happy using I think I need to buy like a metal or an aluminium pen because this one you see it couldn't hold like the bread and I think I've added so much here as you can see it went like on the sides and all that but I don't think that's an issue because as I've said like the ingredients and everything the measurements was all coming from my head but I think the reason why even so especially on the side because I've added it by carbonate of soda by carbonate of soda it's more stronger than your baking soda yes i've added like a quarter teaspoon but that's still a lot so i know next time that by carbonate of soda i don't have to add it um i think baking soda and baking powder as as it is alone it's fine so to be honest i'm happy with this from not having like a recipe because basically this is like my own recipe i've developed it out of my own head so i'm happy with this then i'll know next time um we just buy cabinets of soda and yeah so i'm just gonna let it cool down and we'll taste later cool going for a registration.
Tai Chi session today. All you gotta do is move slow. Red toes turn, small slows. Drag it Thank you.